Hey, what's up guys, Mendel here. I hope you're all doing awesome and wonderful. So I'm really proud and stoked about the Cubase Rock Pack, which can be downloaded now for free through the Steinberg Download Assistant. So this pack contains the multi-tracks of a short little song I wrote, and it was recorded with real drums in the Pro Studio, real bass, real guitars, you name it. I'm so stoked about this project and can't wait to show you what's inside. So as always, let's dig right in, here we go. All right, so here we are at my desktop for a change. And over here you can see Cubase Rock content. Now we have an unmixed folder and a mixed folder. Now what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna open the unmixed session in a bit and I'm gonna show you what's inside, what we did with the drums, just tell you all about the project. And then in the second video, I'm gonna mix the drums. And then in the third video, I'm gonna mix the rest of the song. And when that mix is done, that will be put in the mixed folder. So by the time you will download this, that mixed version will be in the mixed folder. But for now, let's open the unmixed uh, rock session. All right, so when you open the project, it should look something like this. So the only thing I did for you was balancing everything. And we're gonna go through all the files because like when you open the drum folder, it could be a bit overwhelming, but don't worry. I'm here to help you out, talk you through it. Everything like the logical sense before mixing. But before we're going to talk more about this stuff, let's first listen to the song. So, awesome song, even if I say it myself, I'm really proud about everybody's input, like the people at Sand Lane Studios, and especially Kuhn. So, let's start with the drums, shall we? Let's just start from the top and go down. So, these drums were played by a drummer called Kuhn Herfs, which is a dear friend of mine, and in my opinion, the best drummer I have, at least one of the best rock drummers I've ever worked with. I love that guy to death, and he has put so much energy in his drums, it's phenomenal. It's like at the recording session at Sand Lane Studio, it was such an inspiring thing to see, so to like to see this guy drum going back and forth, like ideas on the spot, feeling inspired, and this is the result. I'm, I'm so proud of the dude, and I'm so proud of what we, uh, what we achieved here. So let's start just from the top. So over here you see kick MIDI. Basically, I like to use MIDI as my gates, and the cool thing is Cubase has this MIDI gate thing, and everything is pre-routed for you. So the kick MIDI is uh, like doing this MIDI stuff and we have the snare MIDI. Thomas MIDI cleans everything up. So we have a couple of uh, kick mics. I personally liked uh, this mic the most. Sounded really wet. Um, if you want, like I have it on volume zero now or like infinity below. But if you want, you have the options to use this kick. And we have a kick sub. 
But for this song, I really liked Kick 91. Really wet. And we have one of my kick samples here. And you can use both, do whatever you want. I think I'm gonna use both when we're gonna mix the drums in the next video. And just to show you how awesome that uh, MIDI kick is, so this is without the gate. And when I turn it on, cleans it up, amazing. Right, so then we have the snare. We had two snare mics, a 57 and a key M140. We have 57, KM140. Up to you which you want to use. I used both. And we have one of my snare samples here. And together you get like this really fat snare sound. I'm not using the snare bottom uh, on the balance, but again, if you want, you can use the snare bottom. So everything like, like this, like the kicks are going into a kick bus, snares are going to a snare bus, which is going to a kick and snare bus, and all of that is going into the shells bus. Now also what's going into the shells bus is the toms bus, which is over here, we have the toms. And the hi-hat, by the way, is going directly to the drums group. So Kuhn used a Tama Star Classic kit for this song, and I love that kit to death. Toms are sounding so nice and full, like for example, take this. And again, everything's unmixed. These are just a raw sound, I love that. As I said before, Toms are going into the Toms bus, and the Toms is going to the Shells bus. So then over here you see the Stressor Parallel, C2 Parallel, and ASK Parallel. And you might think, what's that? So in the studio, recording parallel compression into the desk, or into a Cubase, we had a distressor, and I'm not using it on this track, I think. Perhaps during mixing, I will use it. This is what the uh, distressor sounds. We had a very cool um, compress. This is one of my favorite compressors. I wish I had the money to buy one, a Smart Research C2. I came in the studio and saw like, oh my God, they have a C2 uh, compressor. Okay, we're gonna use that. So this is what the C2 sounds like. I love how the thing sounds. And over here you see Ascape, which is my Audioscape uh, bus compressor. Um, and I just put the shells through it and it's really slamming sounding, really snappy. So this is what uh, this compressor sounds like. Like a typical late attack, early release and slam it's like 18 decibels of gain reduction, really snappy. Might use that in the mix, who knows? So all of these three goes to Parabus, and then here, just for options, we have shells and parallel. In case if you want to do some EQ, um, like do one EQ move on both all the shells and the parallel shells. So over here we have the right mic. Funny thing was, Kuhn was hitting that bell so loud that we had to trim the gain during recording. And still you can see these peaks. Dude, that, that dude hits it so hard. So inspiring, but it's like, okay, we have to, it's clipping now. And then we have a China, especially on the end of the song, is hitting that thing really nice and hard. Then of course we have the overheads. Love how they sound, sound really good. And then uh, to me, the star of the drum kit's recordings, uh, the room four, like basically the room mics, but especially the room four. This is what's giving the life to the whole track. And I recommend, like there are no rules for mixing, but if you're gonna mix this track, please use the rooms. It will add so much life. So it's the room close. That's the room four. 
and room mono. Together they go into the, the rooms bus. And to show you how much life they add to the whole mix, watch what happens when I mute them first and then unmute them later. Here we go. Especially on those toms. Love it so much. Okay, so then we get to the bass. So the bass was done by my buddy Willem Jan Kederman, one of the best bass players I know. And we have just a raw DI. We have the bass through an amp, an MPEG amp if I'm correct. And through some distortion. Together. Up to you what you want to do with it, but uh, I think this is a nice uh, starting point for a bass sound. And then we get to the guitars, which is played by myself. Uh, I used a Friedman capture, like I really like the Friedman amp. A bit like Marshall, but a bit more modern in, in some, some kind of sense. I really like that feel of the amp. And you see uh, SC over here. So I have a guitar with Fishman picks up, pickups. And basically what I can do, I can change the full voicing. So not like a, co like a coil split, but it actually changes the whole pickup sound. So over here, I just use the normal voicing. And over here, I use like a single coil voicing. So this is normal. And this is more single coil. A bit more girthy. And blend it together. Really full song, I really like that. All right, so let's go to the keys. All right, so with the keys, um, I gave you guys the MIDI in case you wanna run it through something different. And of course the audio file. So this is like a Rhodes organ or like a Hammond organ kind of vibe. I'm not like a really professional keys player, but I just wanted to add some, some like some 70s keys vibes, like perhaps like a bit deep purple kind of stuff, like 70s rock. So that's playing this thing. Which is basically playing the same chords as the guitars. So that's it for the keys. Uh, so the keys are also going to like a keys group. And then we have the choir. So I wanted to add some, not like, like classical choir, but more a bit like, like 70s Motown-ish kind of um, like choir, like more, more like a bit like gospel stuff. together with the keys, it sounds like really full. And also there's the MIDI in case you want to do something different with it. So then we have the cleans over here. So this is all during that solo section and we'll get to the solo in the end. But um, I really like those 80s chorus effects on guitars. So I have the eyes over here, but over here I used a chorus and a flanger, I think, both of them together, which gives some really cheesy 80s vibe. And basically all of this like to lift the solo up. So I'm gonna mute the solo first because we'll get to that in, in a bit, but just to lift up the song during those high bends on the guitar, on the solo guitar. So 
Sounds really cool. And then we have the guitar solo. I'm really proud of the solo, ego aside, but I, I really like the solo. So uh, it took some, some takes to get it where I want it, but um, it turned out great. So this is the solo soloed. For this, I used uh, one of my own captures of a Mesa Boogie Mark V amp, which, and I think it was like on a fat mode, perhaps even on a clean channel, I think, with a booster pedal, which gives that really like vintagey vibe. <laughs> Sounds really good in my opinion. So this is the solo part with the backings. Really cool, really vibey in my opinion. Really like this track. All right, so that's basically the unboxing of these multi-tracks. In the next video, I'm gonna mix the drums of this song and then in the video after that one, in the third video, I'll be mixing the rest of the song. And that final mix will be put in the mixed folder. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel and see you in the next video. Cheers.